Hey everyone, hope you are doing well. My last video I gave an example of edge blocking or countercutting to the opponent's sword in Chinese martial arts from my line of teachers. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and give a few more examples, so let's dive right into it. The first example is also from my line of teachers as well. You can find it in Large Saber um, for the military. Let's see. I'll turn to the exact page here. Here, and I'll put this on the screen. The bottom image is included just for reference. You can see the flat of the blade and just how wide that blade is. But the top image is where it's at. You can see that he's blocking an attack by counter cutting to it. And he's swinging along that trajectory with the edge. In this same book, Posture 6, you can see that he's doing a kind of cut over his leg to guard his leg. Um, you can look at the Chinese there as well. It specifically says you're cutting towards the opponent's uh, weapon. This is a form I learned uh, maybe when I was, I well, certainly when I was a teen. So it's kind of cool to kind of go back and um, remember these moves and how they work and how you're cutting against the opponent. Next up, we have this cool picture. This is, uh, this was provided by Wong Han Fun's son. So very nice that so we get kind of all these old photos from the family. Here you can see the practitioners turning in to the enemy's weapons with his own. He's got um, kind of a sword and crutch combination and he's turning his edge in to engage with the opponent's weapon. So far, these have all been examples from my line that I've learned, but someone sent me uh, these few sources and said that they were from Elroy Kwok. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I don't know if he's a sword teacher or enthusiast or whatever, but thanks to him for apparently digging these up. So here in this sword book, apparently mentions cutting an opponent's weapon with the edge. And then here for fun are some uh, examples from Wong Hun Fun students doing two-person sword stuff. And you say, now, wait a minute, this is like already the 70s, right? You know, like the film, the grainy uh, video. And yeah, I mean, we've already shown that there are examples from older manuals from like the 30s. But um, Wong Hun Fun is going to be learning saber techniques from Luke Wong Yu and translating for him when he's teaching the army. And he's saying specifically he's teaching what Fan Zudong taught Lo Kuang Yu. So young Wang Hun Fun is going to have this window back into the 1800s. By the end of Wang Hun Fun's life in the 70s, Wang Hun Fun students are going to scramble to try and start filming all this stuff and preserving it. So um, I think the books, the older books, are more solid references, but it is kind of cool to see these in motion. Some of these you can see are just blocks. Others are I happen to cut and the other person happens to cut at the same time, which would happen. I mean, if you're in a sword fight and you're both kind of skilled and you're both trying to end each other, there are probably gonna be cuts that run into each other because you both choose to go at the same time. And there are a handful of techniques I can think of off the top of my head to where you're locked blade on blade. So what do you do? Do you step and shift? Do you roll over? Do you hit with the pommel? Do you pass? Do you grab the person's um, arm? So some of them blocks, some of them kind of just coincidentally we cut and run into each other. And then techniques you practice from there, kind of like sword in fighting. So there you go. Well, um, those are kind of a few of the examples that I can think of the off, off the top of my head. Um, you could probably argue for more, like the covering and Yan Qing Dao where you're leading with your edge and covering the opponent's weapon. There are more, but I think that's definitely enough to say, especially with the references from the other books that aren't even from my lineage. I think there's enough to say that, you know, people were using the edge to deal with their opponent's weapon. Now, are there other options? Of course, there's sticking, there's using the flat, definitely. Um, 
dodging out of the way, countercutting to the opponent's wrist. I mean, some of those things were more like uh, the countercutting were definitely more preferred because if you could cut the guy, then it was done. If you just block, then you just you're alive for another second, but you still have to solve the problem, right? So um, there are definitely other things you could do. This is just one tool in the toolbox of survival that existed. So using your edge to um, block or cut away or I guess even just manage your opponent's weapon, it's certainly something that we can find in the writings of Chinese sword schools. Um, that's kind of all the examples I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and I think that about covers it. It certainly shows that it existed. So I probably won't make a part three unless someone just comes up with like tons of other awesome examples or something. I don't know. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I guess that's all you're going to get from me for this one. So thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and stay warm. And I'll see you next time. Mm.